happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. I've always felt internally that my soul wasn't ready to take up the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita just yet. I didn't know why. I knew it would be a part of my journey. I just sometimes you internally know that hold up, it's not the right time. And I'm starting to feel very gradually that I'm getting towards that right point in time. Now, I don't know why that is. My honest input here is that I've met so many Tantra practitioners on the show who've taught me about the Tantric school of thinking and that's slightly darker for sure. But for some reason, maybe due to the circumstances of my own life, that's the path I'm drawn towards. And that's honestly what I love about Sanatan Dharma, that there can be this path and that path and five more paths and they'll all suit you based on your own subjective reality. But by learning about the other path, you'll be able to gain for your own path as well. That's a part of the reason I'm bringing up all these questions to you. The second bigger reason is that um, through the show, I've ended up meeting cricketers. And it begins by the inner child in me being excited that I'm talking to someone that I'm a fan of. And then eventually I realize these guys are also human. And what I also realize is that the top international cricketers are actually really pure souls. That's possibly why God has gifted them that level of success, that level of material luxury. Because these guys are very pure and to play sport at that level, I do believe that you need to be a certain level of pure. At least that's what I feel when I speak to these guys. And all the three of them who are kind of friends to me now, uh, which is Yuzvendra Chahal, KL Rahul and Ishan Sharma. All three of them keep talking about Sanatan Dharma. All three of them have questions about the Bhagavad Gita. And in conversations with them, like the reason I'm drawn to them as friends, even outside of the show, is because all these guys are killers. Like they're very gritty. They're all tigers. That energy rubs off on you. And I love being around them. And that's probably a part of the reason maybe they like being around me. That they sense that same aggression for the sake of career but one layer deep below the aggression is an aggression towards the process of learning and they've brought up the Gita so much which is why this thought has been in my head that much and this is why I made this podcast centered around the Gita and its knowledge and it's going to go to all three of them uh, and I'm sure their questions are also answered through the course of this whole conversation my question to you is that with guys like this Okay, who have gained so much luxury in the material world or anyone who gains a lot of material success. Uh, why has God only chosen these souls? Let's just take the, the example of cricket. Okay, for example, India is a constant conveyor belt of cricketers. But there's very few souls who get selected to play for the national team. And there might be very hardworking, very talented souls who just don't get that opportunity. What is God trying to teach the guys who actually get to the top? Is God trying to teach them that, you know what? Actually, all this means nothing. Is that the lesson? Are these souls supposed to set an example for the other souls? Apparently, what is the domestic cricketer who's never got an opportunity to play for India, but he's as talented, as hardworking? What's the lesson for him? And of course, I'm using cricket as an analogy for life in general, because this is also how life works in many ways, especially when it comes to material success. Where is the role of extreme material success in a spiritual journey? Everyone needs a different experience to bring them to spiritual consciousness. For some people, divinity will arrange a ridiculous amount of fame, success, uh, accolade, achievement. And as you said, they will come to that point where then they realize I've got it all, I've done it all, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt and still something's missing. It's interesting that in Vedic teachings, there are four stages, Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. That is said that when one performs Dharma, some kind of religious piety, then what happens is they get artha, which means um, facility, material uh, 
facilities, wealth, position, and so on. And from that artha comes kama, which means gratification, enjoyment, as you know, um, pleasure. And then after all of that, what comes next is moksha, which means liberation. Because after all of that artha and kama, they realize there's still a vacuum in my heart. There's still something missing. And then what happens is naturally then the search begins for what is beyond. And so some souls need to go on that journey. Some souls need to go on a journey of extreme pain or some kind of difficulty in their life, which then triggers their journey. Some people need to go through a journey where something causes them to question the world and that's their journey. So everyone has something different. I'll just say one other thing. In the Bhagavad Puran, which is another beautiful literature, Queen Kunti, as we know from the uh, Mahabharat, who underwent so many difficulties, she cites a beautiful prayer. She says, Janme Shvariya Shruta Shri Bhir Eidhama Namadapuman Nirvar Hatya Bidatum Ve Tvamakin Chanagocharam. She says, Good karma is represented in four ways. Janma, a good upbringing, a good family life. Aishwarya, opulence, wealth, material facility. Shruta, intelligence and analytical competence, cognitive ability. Shri, beauty. Anyone in this world who has any four of these, you can understand they have good karma. Can you repeat the four again? Janma, good upbringing, good family, good parents, like that. Aishwarya, wealth, opulence, material facility. Shruta, education, intelligence, intellectual capacity. Shri, beauty, physical beauty, um, attractiveness. And there's some people who have all four. Some people have all four. So are these people a but, representation of bags of great karma? Yes. But the interesting thing is that in this prayer, what Kunti Devi says, Tvam akinchana gocharam. Divinity can only be approached by someone who has become completely frustrated with these four things. <laughs> <laughs> but even these mean nothing. Only when one has lost all the faith in these four material things, only such a person can approach divinity with true sincerity. But these four things that you named are the desires for so many people. These are so desirable. Looking good, having a great family life, having wealth, being really smart. This is what we're conditioned this is what everyone's into looking for. Believing that these are the goals. Yes. If you're not great looking, you want great looking kids. You ideally want a lot of family balance around you. Everyone wants to be rich and famous. And what was the last one? Uh, smart. Smart. Yeah. Everyone wants to be smarter. Yeah. Many letters behind their name. And this is what you're taught <laughs> since like your yeah a little child that this is what you need to strive towards and eventually in life you realize ah okay this is not where the answers lie because looks fade your family will eventually die exactly. um, time takes away everything yeah time even takes away your mind your mind will deteriorate and uh, of course your looks will deteriorate of course wealth also will lose and a little people bit of will meaning. disappear from your life so only I mean, in your old age you realize ah okay I gotta get to God or you learn by observing, by hearing, by seeing so many people who have achieved all these things, but still are looking for something beyond it. But one thing I do want to say, Ranveer, is that even if there are here, as you mentioned, this is what everyone is looking for. And then one may say, well, then I'm not ready to give up all of those things. Does that mean I can't begin my spiritual path? No, you can still begin your spiritual path. There's another verse in the Bhagavad Puran. I'm quoting these verses and I'm saying the Sanskrit 
Because the, you know, Ranveer, in the Sanskrit is a power. There's a potency in that vibration which helps us to instill the realization that's coming from that verse. And therefore we try to say the Sanskrit as well. Akama sarvakamova moksha kama udharati divrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param if one is a karma, they have no more desires for any of these things. Or whether one is sarva karma, they have all desires for these things. This verse says it doesn't matter. They should still continue on their spiritual journey. And what will happen is in time, the realization, the revelation that this is not the goal of life, that, will, that penny will drop. So even if we, we're seeking material things, we can still continue on our spiritual journey. And what will happen is that in the course of that journey, the futility of these things in their ability to bring us true happiness will become apparent within our heart. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to TRS Clips for more.